um, I'm just going to talk to you for 20 minutes. Uh, possibly you're not going to get a great deal in terms of potential treatments for skin conditions, but what I want to talk to you about in 25 minutes is on how now do we integrate genomics into skin treatment programs. Now, as you know, genomics is becoming the technology of the future. Everything now is becoming integrated with genomics. Your behavior in every respect, even your personal behavior and mood disorders is now related to some form of genomic integration with biochemical processes. Now, the question now is how come no one is doing gene genetics of the skin? That's a very interesting question. I always wonder what stopped people from doing that. And I think uh, we have a few answers in there for you. The first thing I want to tell you is that, uh, I'll, um, unfortunately, we haven't, we got a short time, but I want to talk about you, to you about the basic concepts, uh, genes that need to be tested for skin conditions and disorders, including hair, and also the methodology and intervention uh, and strategies. So we'll try to cover that quickly so that uh, we can actually get something out of this lecture that is going to be useful for you. Now, uh, essentially, the overview um, that we have on, on the lecture is that, that we'd like to get an evaluation of, of the status of health and the pathology of the skin. And how we're going to do that is by using very specific types of genetic tests that are targeting very clear, specific genes that have a relationship with the health of the skin. Now, you know every day now and every week we get hundreds and hundreds of new findings in terms of new SNPs and genes that appear to be associated with the health of the body. There are three million SNPs in, in the human genome, and currently we roughly work with about 200 to 250 of them. There are thousands that are available in the database, but we don't quite know what they do. Now, what we've done is actually concentrate on the things that are clinically demonstrated and they have a clinical relationship and application. In other words, we select those genes that actually have a function that relates to specific parameters of the health of the skin. I'm not sure I have to change this, right? Okay. The genes that we, um, we originally selected had, in particular, a key role in skin barrier function, in the hydration of the skin. We looked at genes that dealt with the metabolism of the skin. In other words, how did the skin develop to be the functional barrier that it is, how it actually come into place, and what me metabolic mechanisms and, and biochemical mechanisms are involved in that process. Very important, the issue of DNA damage and repair. We've uh, done a great deal of work looking at what genes actually regulate DNA damage and repair, especially situations where you get exposed to high levels of UV light. What regulates the growth of the skin? What regulates the death of the skin, right? which are important issues regarding the, the final structure, the, the tentile, textile strength, and actually the function of the skin, the aging of the skin, the wrinkle process, the pigmentation, and, of course, the carcinogenesis of the skin. So what we've done fundamentally is to look at the genes and isolate a group of about 16 to 17 genes that actually deal and have a primary function with this, functions, this functionality of the skin. Ultimately, the objective is that we have, we have in mind is to develop um, an individualized approach uh, for a skin care treatment program, and also being able to provide you with an, a way of developing individualized formulations for every particular individual. Now, you know these days, the generic drugs are going out of the door. In the future, you will have pharmacogenomics, and also you're going to have nutrigenomics. Pharmacogenomics means that every individual responds essentially different to, to a particular drug. There's no longer one drug for everybody. The future is about that every drug will have to suit your genetic makeup. It will have to suit the way you process the drugs to your liver function, to the capacity of the P450 enzymes in the liver to detoxify certain drugs. So the future is for individualized medicine that is based on the reality of your genomics and also the reality of your lifestyle. So for the skin, is exactly the same. Every program in the future will rely on an understanding of how your genes actually function. So there are two main aspects of the functions of the gene. One is what you inherited from your parents, from mom and dad, which is essentially that gives you an overall understanding of what their likely risks and, and, and performance of your genes and, and particular tissues of the body with time. Now, that doesn't have to be, in fact, concrete in, and, and, and set in stone. The risks associated with your genes are modified for your lifestyle. 
And there's where we look at gene expression, because gene expression in reality is a more important than the inherited risks. And gene expression is how are your genes performing? Are they being damaged by your lifestyle? Have you methylated important protective genes? Have you switched off antioxidant genes? How have you dealt with your genes over the last few years of your life? And how are they performing now? And that's, in fact, for us the next step in understanding how to integrate genomics into uh, programs like skin, skin treatment programs. Now, essentially, the system is very simple. I'm just going to take you to some basic uh, 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 points. Uh, first, you collect a skin sample uh, by using a skin tape system. This is a very, it's, a, it's very, very much part of a very strong sticky tape system. You know, small skin tape, you actually place it in your skin, you peel it off, and you carry the samples of your skin with that. You don't have to go any deeper than the surface layer because, essentially, you know, as you know, the genetic code is exactly the same on the dead skin as it is on the live skin, right? And the beauty of genomics is, of course, that every dead cell will still represent the true reality of your genomes, right? So we collect the skin sample, then we do a gene analysis and expression, and also look at the SNPs, you know, single nucleotide polymorphism. That is, your inherited differences between individuals expressed by the number of the SNPs. Remember I said to you there are 3 million SNPs in the genome, we're currently looking at about 200 to 250 of them, we have access to about three or 4,000 of SNPs. The important ones for skin are roughly about 16. We generate a comprehensive report, including an individualized skin care program. I'm going to show you some draft reports that are, being, are, are getting into place at the moment, so you see the sort of program that you're going to be able to access. And we'll have a detailed intervention program. The results are based on each individual genetic makeup and genetic expression. So the key to this process is the individual response of every patient. Essentially, to, uh, to collect the skin, you're looking at the T-zone, as we call it, and the U-zone here and there, and the C, you see, behind the ear is normally used as a control process. It also allows you to give, uh, give you some information on wrinkle from behind the skin of, of uh, the, 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 the section of the ear. So, um, for example, the T-zone, um, you can use it to do oil measurements, moisture measurements, the same thing for the B area, the B-zone. And then you've got, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, y you can actually use uh, wrinkle measurements using either the A, B, or C areas, okay? Uh, to remove the skin samples is very simple. You just call, uh, you, you actually just very gently clean your face, your skin, using just warm water. Uh, then you use an alcohol swab uh, and remove any excess, any uh, dead cells or residues or any other forms of cosmetics from your skin. You apply the tape in the surface, allow it to stay there for five minutes, roughly, then you gently peel it off. And that tape goes into a little tube, and it heads right to the lab for testing. That, that, that skin tape has sufficient information for us to work for the next two or three years with that patient, right? So the, the skin gene tests, um, kit is very simple. It has a, a sampling kit, then we do an extraction of DNA and RNA. So we actually extract from a kit the DNA and the RNA from that particular patient. We do that very quickly, so we retain sufficient amount of RNA. In fact, a lot of these things you can actually do in your own surgery. In the future, you'll be able to set it up in your clinic, and we can train, essentially, someone, perhaps with limited knowledge of uh, medical technology, to be able to do that for you. Very simple test, actually. We target specific skin gene selection. I'm going to discuss them with you now. Uh, then we do the gene test methodology process, which is a standard procedure that is uh, looking at the SNPs and also the expression. So we use PCR or real-time PCR, and we use a DNA RNA chip. And the biochips allows us to determine which SNPs are present, how they're functioning, and we also can do DNA and RNA expression on the same chips. We looked at the genetic uh, gene test database. Then we do a gene test interpretation. And then we suggest a tailor-made care program for the patient with a particular intervention profile. So everything is especially very sequential. Uh, there is no mystery to this technology. It's only a question of how to interpret the results and how to integrate what we see now with what potentially the patient will require as an intervention.